What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance and personal growth and I provide simple, realistic ways to achieve your financial goals in today's economy. We're going to jump straight into this video today with five ways that you need to be saving your money this year. We're going to jump straight into this and these five things are things that a lot of people do not do. And you may be doing some of these already. That's great. Let's make sure we get to all five of these now. So anyway, Number one, you need a high yield savings account. I personally use Marcus by Goldman Sachs. I've been getting 4.5% returns and more on this per month, but there's a lot out there. There's Wealthfront and there's other things of that nature out there. You just gotta do your own research on it. But I've been with Marcus by Goldman Sachs for a while now, and they've had the highest interest rate for me. There might be some higher ones out there now, and if you can find some higher ones, that's even better. But here's the thing. When you put money in your regular savings account, it has hardly no return. Everybody knows that when you pretty much have thousands of dollars in your savings account, even that's not growing very much at all. But when you have thousands in something like Marcus by Goldman Sachs, for example, 100%, you're going to see a return from that by the end of the year. You might have earned a few hundred dollars by the end of the year just by having money in your savings account, just as you normally would. Some people don't even get that kind of return from their stock market investing. So that's really all there is to it. That money is going to grow and why not let the money that you're saving grow? And if you do need some money on hand, you can have your savings account that doesn't earn much interest at all. But on the side, you can also have your high yield savings account with Marcus by Goldman Sachs. Click the link in the description if you're interested in that. We're gonna move on to the next topic. And this one here is a very simple one, but a lot of people still don't do it. So I want all of y'all to let me know when y'all do this in the comments, or if you're already doing this in the comments, please let me know. Automate your savings. That's all I want you to do. Because anytime I've had an issue saving money, it was generally because I just straight up forgot to do it. I forgot to make the transfer myself. Why would I rely on myself to remember to do something as forgetful as I can be about even the most important things in life? Why would I rely on my own memory when I could just tell my bank account to remember for me? I can say, look, on the first week of every month, on every Thursday for the next five years or indefinitely, I want you to put this amount of money in my savings account. Why can't, how hard is it to do that? Matter of fact, I know not everybody knows how to do that. And I didn't even know how to do it at first either. So once I went and learned how to do it and I've applied it to my own life for years, I went ahead and made a video. You can click it up here or down in the description, but it's gonna show you exactly how to automate your money and automate your savings. Because here's the thing, when you pay your bills on time, a lot of times it's probably not because you just remembered, oh yeah, today. because it, you have so many bills, you're really not gonna remember off the top of your head, oh yeah, I have this bill and it comes on the 13th and this one comes on the 17th. We don't got time for none of that. That is an automated bill. Nine times out of 10 for most of y'all, your bills are automated. Like every single one of them are probably automated. And the one that's not automated, you probably be forgetting about. I know because I used to be doing that mess, but it's okay, we're only human. But let's use something that is computerized to help us escape from our own flaws. Just little adjustments like this is going to help your savings go up drastically compared to what they would have been if you didn't do this. After you're done watching this video, go ahead and click that link. Watch that next video if you don't already know how to automate your savings account. Promise you it's going to be good. And now we've gotten to the meat and potatoes of this video right here. And this is the main thing I want to talk to y'all about today your own personal goals. This is something that I find very special and very near and dear to a lot of people's hearts. Your own personal goals. That is what every savings everything should be about. So think about when you have wanted to save up for something like a TV. That's more on the simple side on this list, but it could be life changing too. It could be something like a house. It could be something like a new car. It could be something like saving up for your kid's college fund or your own college fund, saving up for a wedding ring, or if you're like me, saving up for fitness things like, you know, boxing gloves and shin guards and mouth guards and things like that. But either way, you should have an ongoing list of things that you want, and then next to them should be the price that they are, and then you should look at saving up the exact amount of money to get those things. For You're not gonna be able to buy everything in cash. Like, you're probably not gonna buy a house in cash but you will probably have to put a down payment on that house. So it's not gonna be for every little thing, but 
whenever you make that list, you can prioritize based off of that list what you want the most. And this is something a lot of people don't do. It sounds so simple, but I promise you a lot of people don't do this. This right here would make your life a thousand times easier because if you see everything you want right in front of you and you see this is a thousand dollars, this is three hundred dollars, this is two hundred dollars, this is forty thousand dollars, you're gonna see real quick what you can afford to do and what you're gonna have to wait a few years to do. And that's perfectly fine, but when we impulse buy, because here's the reason why personal goals is even mentioned in this video, right? The reason a lot of people are in financial situations or you're not financially where you wanna be, a lot of time is because of impulse buying. I've done it, I'm sure you've done it. I don't know you, but pretty much everybody I've ever met has impulse bought something at some time. And you know, we're not talking about you know, a pack of gum impulse buy. We're talking about like a thousand dollar or more impulse buy. I've done it before and you know, I get it in that moment. You really want that thing. You really want that PlayStation 5. You really want that TV. You really want those shoes. You really want that overpriced vacuum. You really want that necklace or that watch. I get it. I understand. I've used two different things to kind of counteract that in my life. And one of them I actually created myself and you can actually get access to it by clicking the link in the description, but it's a simple financial goals and savings tracker. And I'm actually going to get into my computer right now and show it to you. So you can see exactly what I'm talking about and put a face to a name, so to speak. All right. So I'm on my laptop. I'm going to be looking this way, but I'm just looking at my laptop so I can demonstrate this. I'm going to be sharing my screen. So it might all it might actually take up the whole real estate of the screen but either way check out what i'm about to show you all right so we're in my excel i appreciate y'all voting by the way to tell me what you like more excel or google sheets i'm with you guys i like excel too but as many things as i can make in google sheets that i can make in excel i will put on both platforms just so you know but i'm more familiar with excel and i love excel anyway Right now, what you're looking at is a bunch of dummy data that I just put in here just to make sure that these populate properly, they do. Um, but what you see here is just my savings goals tracker that I made for myself. And I think it will benefit you guys a lot too. But anyways, check this out. We're gonna delete all of this and we're gonna start from scratch. We're gonna go through a little exercise. I'll keep the dummy data down here because it really doesn't matter. But anyway, so if we're checking this out, right? Let's say you have a goal for your savings account, right? Boom. And then you have a goal for an emergency fund. Those are obviously things that you're going to be needing to have. They're necessary to have, and they're going to be very valuable for your life, right? But then there's going to be things that you want. Maybe you want an iPad. And maybe it's, you know what? Not just an iPad. iPad Pro. Because why not, right? Let's say you want a house down payment as well. So we'll put a house in there. Whoops. Y'all got me out here making typos. And then let's say that you want to start taking good old Reggie's advice and go ahead and start investing in an index fund. Now, what's the amount needed for all of these things? Let's say for your savings goals, you wanna have 1500 in there minimum. And let's say you're not there yet, that's fine, right? But for your emergency fund, maybe you're not gonna feel comfortable until there's at least 40 grand in there. I understand that and there's nothing wrong with that. But an iPad Pro is dumb expensive. I mean, my God, like I don't actually know the official price, but we'll say it's $2,300 after you add, you know, the terabyte and the keyboard and uh, the Apple pencil and all that stuff to it, right? Um, so for your house down payment, houses are getting expensive. So let's say that's like another 45 grand. And then for your index fund, uh, for a minimum payment, I think that is, we'll say 4,000 to be on the safe side. Cool. So we have our goals. We know how much is needed right and if you look at the meters over here to, this is going to look something like a thermometer when it's over with like kind of like these down here just so you can see how close you are to your goal what i find about saving is it can be very uh discouraging because it's kind of like paying off debt you're throwing money at it and then it seems like the money just keeps rising because it literally is because of the interest rate but when it comes to saving for something when you're putting the money towards it Let's say for your savings, for example, we're going to go back to the screen. Let's say you're $800 in or $900 in. 
you're 60% of the way there. To me, looking at that, that's helpful to know. Oh, I forgot to blank these out because we're going to actually put that here in a second. But, you know, that's 60% of the way there. So you're closer, you're closer to your goal than you think a lot of times, but it still seems so far away. But at least your, your bank account isn't going to have like a bar that says, all right, you're trying to save $1,500, you're $900 in. At least my bank account doesn't do that. And if there is one that you know of, please let me know about it. But um, until then, this is what I'm using. But it's kind of something that's a motivational tool as well. And it, it also shows you where you're at. But you can also take this information and plan for it. Because let's say you want to get to your $1,500 by March. Well, you can say, well, this is due in March. And specifically, March 1st, right? Cool. So that's going to tell you how much you need to start prioritizing to save between now and March. For your emergency fund, let's say you're actually uh, doing pretty solid, but it's still taking a while to build. Let's say you're $7,000 in. Super far off, but you're better off than someone who doesn't even have $1,000 in their savings account. Let's say for your iPad Pro, you have absolutely nothing yet because, you know, that's not the priority. Your house down payment, $17, $17, $17,000 in, right? And then for your index fund, you have a whopping $30. For me, something like this to the right, it illustrates exactly, it, it gives you a picture of where you are versus where you wanna be. So this is where you are, and this is where you wanna be. Bank accounts do not have this capability that I know of, but you can put notes over here. You can say realistically, this by if I'm saving a thousand dollars a month, then I know this isn't going to be achieved within a year or even two years. So we'll say March. I don't know why I like March so much, but March 2026. That's when I plan to have that buy. Right. And let's say for the iPad Pro, you have nothing. Here's the thing I want to tell you about this with the iPad Pro. If I'm looking at this list, I know I better not be out here impulse buying an iPad Pro just because I have the money. Because when I look at my actual priorities, something ain't lining up right. If I have zero dollars and zero cents to contribute to this iPad Pro, I could see if I had nineteen hundred dollars. And instead of going towards my um, my index fund, I put it towards that. That makes sense. Right. But when you have nothing saved up for it. And you're like, hey, I got the money for it. I'm going to throw all my money at it. And now these are going to take a back a back seat for a little while. Or even worse, if you don't have the money for it, you're swiping your credit card and paying interest on it. This is how we get into a bind. This is how we get into the to the position where we really don't have much money left over at the end of each month. And if we just use something as simple as this tool, we would have something to go off of and we don't even necessarily need to set a date for this but we know not to impulse buy it but we'll say you won't even be able to start saving for this until 2025 so let's just say by the end of 2025 so december boom and just so you guys know uh before i keep going there's one two three four there's five of these total so it's going to take a while just to get five of these done. But once those are done, you can make more and more and more and more house down payment. You're 17,000 in and you're fairly confident that this will be done by, we'll say February 2027. And that's just the goal that you're putting for yourself. If you achieve it earlier, awesome. But you're giving yourself that breathing room to achieve this by February 2027. Index fund. Maybe it's not a huge priority, but you know you could definitely achieve it by December 2024. This is obviously just an example, so bear with me. But to me, the best way to deal with your personal goals is one at a time. If you're saving for everything all at once, it's going to get very overwhelming. And it's going to feel very much stretched like this. But if you look at something like down here, where we're looking at, I know it has some of the same things down here, but this is still just an example. But uh, if you're looking at the savings account, we're close. If we're looking at the emergency fund, 
we're pretty far off but the index fund is right there so since I'm closer on the index fund, I can put my all into the index fund until I reach that goal and then go on to the next one and then the next one and then, you know, so on and so forth, right? So it doesn't necessarily have to be you're stretching yourself on all of these things. You need to really just focus on one savings goal at a time, but it's good to have them listed so you can see how much they cost and where you're at right now. But when I'm prioritizing where I'm at and what I'm going, where I'm going to be with it, I'm going to go ahead and make sure, you know what, I'm close to my savings goal. So I'm going to just, I'm going to make sure I put all the money that I save into here. And once that's at a hundred percent, like once this is at $2,000, that's cool. I don't have to worry about this anymore. On to the next and then on to the next, so on and so forth. And the cool thing, which I think is nice to have when it comes to this, is you can actually put little notes here at the bottom. How about this? We'll say 1200. So as of today is today when I'm recording this video, it's January 11th, right? So as of January 11th, you have $800 to go to reach your savings goal. Cool. So now we need to think about if we're going to hit that by March 1st, that means $400 for the next couple of months. So I've got to save 400 per month for the next two months. So this keeps you crystal, whoops, this keeps you crystal clear. Hit my microphone. This keeps you crystal clear on where you're at and how much you have to do to get to your goal. Even though you're close, you still have to grind a little bit. You still have to hit $400 per month for the next two months to hit your goal. And if you deviate from that, or if you impulse buy something, you just might not get there. Especially if your version of impulse buying is grabbing money from your savings account to throw it an iPad Pro. So don't do it. And that's why I created this note section. And obviously, if you need to make it bigger, you can increase the size. You know, it's nothing. But you want to make sure that you don't just have your goals and and no plan at all. You want to have your goals where you're at, how far off you are from it, and when is it due, and then have little notes for yourself of how you're going to accomplish this by the due date. Don't just put a due date up there so you can say, yeah, this is when I'm going to do it. Okay, but how? How? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's all I wanted to show y'all on my computer, but if you're interested in having something like this, please click the link down below and you will have access to it. Moving on, you want to put money into your Roth IRA. I can't stress that enough. You especially want to do it while you're young. Um, I've expressed this in a few other videos, but I kind of was late to the game when it came to a Roth IRA and I was already investing in a bunch of other different places which were profitable, but at the same time, they don't have the same kind of advantages that something like a Roth IRA would have. Being tax advantaged, that's really where a lot of people should focus. That is the tax advantages. You're going to get taxed either way. But if you can make it to where you invest in something that isn't taxable, once you withdraw it at retirement age, that's extremely important. And you're saving for retirement anyway. You're contributing to your 401k anyway. So why not have something that offsets it as well and have a Roth IRA? And of course, there's a limit to it every single year. I think this year it's uh, $7,500 whichever one it really is, I'll put it up here on the screen, but you need to be contributing to it and do it as young as possible so it can grow as much as possible so that when you're about retired, you won't just have a 401k, but you'll also have a Roth IRA that is not taxed. And if you're someone who's really ambitious like me, there is gonna come a time where your Roth IRA is gonna be limited as far as what you can put into it because once you hit a certain amount of earnings per year as a single person or as a couple, it's gonna be something you will no longer be able to contribute to. So that's something you need to be thinking about as well. But I'm not gonna to spend too much time in this video going over the Roth IRA. I do have a video that I just discussed in depth Roth IRA stuff, where to invest your first $1,000, stuff like that. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, check out the video below. My investing videos don't typically get a ton of views, but if you're a saving minded person and you want to build your net worth and you want to build wealth overall, you care about your personal finances, eventually investing is going to become a topic of discussion, which is why I continue to make investment videos and inform people. And that's why I have an investing course and all the fun things. But anyway, if you want to check something like that out, check out that video. It'll inform you 
on why Roth IRA is important. And I also have another Roth IRA video if you're interested in that as well. And number five, dedicate your extra money to your savings. Simple, easy even. It's just a lot of people don't do it. You know, when you get your bonuses from work, when you get your tax refund at the beginning of the year or early in the year, I should say, make sure you use that. You put that to good use. It's easy to take that money and splurge because it's money you wouldn't have otherwise had. I think of things a little differently than that. I'm not saying you shouldn't enjoy yourself with this money. I'm not a buzzkill. I'm not here to tell you don't do anything fun with your money. I'm just saying if you take the whole thing, if you take all of your extra money and just kind of splurge on it, I don't think that's the good idea. I don't think that's a good idea. I mean, I think it's the wrong thing to do. I think it's not going to get you to where you want to get to financially. And I think anytime you're blessed with extra money, you should use some of it to be proactive with, whether that's putting it into savings or putting it into investments. That's just my opinion. But yes, you should just plan to take, I don't know, 10% or even more if you want of your extra money and put it into something you care about. And then when it comes to the extra money, yeah, by all means, go out to that dinner, go out to that concert, go travel, get on a plane, do something with it. Yeah, that's great because you have to enjoy life. You don't work as hard as you work to not enjoy life and not do the things you want to do. But at the same time, just use your brain, you know, be smart about it. Don't just, if you get an extra $20,000 this year, if you spend all $20,000 on meaningless activities that you have nothing to show for at the end of the day i just don't think that's a wise idea i mean does that sound wise to you just food for thought just think about that but anyway that's all i want to cover in this video today this video is getting kind of long but anyway thank you so much for watching this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you control your finances and control your life i appreciate you being here with me today and listening to what i have to say and i will see you in the next video